So, not gonna lie, start of my 2022 NPRC season has been very, very difficult. Battery problems, motor problems, all kinds of stuff, but I think we are finally on the right track. I'm Chad, this is the Dorky M40 RC channel, and we are gonna make you faster today. So as many of you know, we've had a lot of good stuff and a lot of new stuff going on. You'll see even more of it in this video. Ran the GTR body, it was all right. Got the Racer RC Mach 22 body here now, and the straight line spoiler to go along with that. So gonna be getting together with Gary so we can figure out how to get that hooked up. Speaking of hooking up, we've been playing with tires like crazy. We've got the Pro Lines, which I just did a video on, so check that out if you are new here. We got the Voodoo's in, still haven't ran those yet. Hopefully get to do that today. A lot of things different about my car, and of course, castle tuning, trying to figure out the 1412 motor. So see a lot of big changes in this video, and at the end, I'll talk about even some more, but right now, I also wanna tell you that some of you have known by the community post that I canceled the DR10M pre-order. For me, it just doesn't make any financial sense after actually looking at all of the factory upgrades that you can put into the car and how much extra it would cost you know you'd be almost into like a full chassis build you know a performance chassis at that point not saying that this is not going to be like a performance chassis but now that we've got a little bit more insight like what it's all about what it's coming with and everything else it just doesn't make sense to me so i'm going to go back to uh using the dr10 uh, kit that's five star makes to switch everything over to that that'll solve a lot of the problems that we have with the beef kit with the beef tubes chassis as far as getting uh you know the transmission up right in uh spaced properly so the dog bones are level being able to use more of our wheelie bar and stuff and it's end up it's going to be 130 dollar uh switch over and not going into this and i know like a few people have said hey just do a budget build just run a stock and it's like I'm not a stock guy, and I know many of you guys aren't either. Like, if I have this thing, it's going to end up into like a thousand dollar car, and I don't need that. Like, I already have one of those. I want another solid platform to do some testing on, and the DR10 platform is solid. A lot of you guys are running, and hopefully, we can demonstrate with another hundred thirty dollar chassis that corrects some of its issues, unlike the brisket that you can actually have a really dang good car. So that's where we're at with that right now. So let's go ahead and just start with Friday night, shall we? All right, so we are out at the night spot and I've made one hit, a really soft hit, just a 2.8 at 55. And all I've done on this second hit is just to increase the ramp and the curve a little bit on the San Juan and see exactly what we can get going on. Quite an improvement from the first hit, so we're just gonna keep on working the remote a little bit and see what we can get out of it before we start messing with the ESC. I'm running zero degrees of cheat right now. All right, so recap, first couple hits, 285, 255, 60 miles per hour. Not making a whole lot of RPMs, like 18,000. Looked like there was a little bit of slip going on. So I'm running to 8131, final drive is like 679. So I'm not even getting into like my timing range. So I'm gonna, I adjusted the timing range and I'm gonna try little things with the ramp and give it one more pull and see how things go. And then maybe we will make a gearing change and bring it back to something a little bit more reasonable, maybe for the car or whatever, so. So that's where we cut it for Friday night. Things were just not going well. It was cold outside. I really wasn't understanding what was going on with the logging and the RPM. So as soon as I got home that night, I actually went online and posted to the Castle Facebook group and got some information. See, when you go into your log viewer here, you can look and you can actually change this to two, port of two pole to four pole which I had already done because now I'm running a four pole motor. What I was doing though, what I was putting in my specific opinion and main gear, which basically gave me a three to one gear ratio. And if you change this to a three to one gear ratio, you can probably not see it down here, but my max RPMs went from about 42,000 down to 14,000. So what I was doing was applying my actual cheat timing range 
from really crazy levels. So I was trying to put in either like six degrees or like 45 degrees all within like this small window because I thought my car was only making 20,000 RPMs when in actuality it was making at 42,000. You know, if we zoom out here and take a look at the kits from yesterday, you can see that things look a lot more normal and a lot more settled in here that uh, now that we have that set, you can see the little RPM range here as we go up and you can see that it's at 42,000, which, you know, most people are saying that it's around 50,000 is where you will end up at with this car. So that is all good. Now, besides making that change, I also made a lot of other changes to the car uh, for Saturday, which was yesterday. Uh, it rained for like most of the morning. So I was just kind of been putting some things off about the car and well you'll see right now all right so in my attempt to try to teach everybody how to go faster let's just start with what is going on and what's different so first of all we got a lot of different things going on at once and that is never a good thing take a look at the car here real quick so I put the time in today and I finally did a complete weight reduction on the car. I've managed to shave off a little over 400 grams, maybe close to 500 when I'm running the Voodoos over there on the skinnier rims, which will save me an additional 60 grams. So my car was over, if not close to 3000 grams, you know, which is very, very heavy. I'm down now with these to about 2650 with the voodoos i should be under 2600 so i've taken off a lot of stuff there's no weight box on the front no weight box on the back got rid of roll bar we've got the skinnier shock tower so it's like a two millimeter or two and a half instead of a three three millimeter plate and also a skinnier front shock tower as well smaller tires redid the wiring here we increased our payload with the battery I rearranged everything on the car so that way I bought myself about an extra maybe inch, inch and a half of battery tuning. So we're able to move that front to back, of course, for our bias if we need a little bit more traction. But everything is holding and working right good. The car is honestly just as stable as it was before and we're working now on trying to push it. So I know the first thing a lot of people want to know about is the Ultra Blues. So the ultra blues right here are on the heaters. So they are severely prepped and a lot of good stuff on them. So I need to get them on the drill with some brake cleaner and really give these things a good scrubbing. I actually just put a coat of the WAP on there. Then I kind of got it loose down there where there's a lot of gravel and everything like that. It comes to the castle system and the motor. So thanks to Stu Mac and a lot of other people on the castle group, the logging on the castle is pretty, uh, you know, it's great, but it's also, you know, not very intuitive. There's things that I wish castle had, like I wish I knew what the timing slew rate was, like how much timing is being applied over that certain range. We can set the range, but we really don't know like when it's coming and when it's going and everything else. So I've been all over the place trying different gearings and all kinds of stuff, but now that I've got a handle on my actual logging, I think what I'm gonna do is just start making hits with the same of everything as mundane as it sounds and go up and down the gears and see which gearing is giving me the best results. I had a couple good runs today, um, like around two, three, two, four runs with uh, just uh, 10 degrees of timing. And what I've been doing is using the torque of the motor to just power everything and bring the timing in at the end. And it actually has worked great because I've actually been able to like, not only with the new battery, but I've been able to like maintain super high voltages. But you see, can see by this log here, as soon as you add in timing, and I'll save this log so we can go over it on the computer. But as soon as you add in timing, you can see your voltages start to drop. And of course, I've had some slippage and stuff going on in this here. Um, that was 50,000 uh, minimum of a six volt. So just not no need for all that timing right now. I'm just kind of chasing my tail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump this baby back down to 10 degrees of timing and I'm gonna just leave one long slew rate of like 6,800 up to like 
you know, 75,000 or whatever. So I'm not even going to get like all the timing put into it. And we're just going to run that and see what we can do. And we've right now we've got a 27 pinion, 81 spur in there, and we're just going to play the game. If we get it done in the next couple days, cool, but it's probably going to take a little bit more time than that. And I'll share you guys the details as I get them. Ah! Well, that wasn't good. Parts flew off on the dead side. What the? What did I just say? It was the? Uh, it ripped the things out of the nylon, and then broke that. Ripped it out, which yeah, it's made out of their like nylon top of type of stuff. Looks like the whole bar is kind of. Cockeyed too. You might be able to loosen it and go back. Yeah. Yeah, because I can see some of the screws are kind of. Yeah. All right. So that was a good hit and a bad finish. Always, if you got the room to shut down, just let it go, man. Don't try to like get things under grips and stuff because you're just going to, you know, that's full of rocks down there and hit those rocks and just went sideways and spun around and broke off the wheelie bar, which is pretty surprising because Five Star Stuff's made out of this nice 3D printed Tepa nylon material. Uh, interestingly enough, I actually ordered their single bar, which will be here actually this week. And, you know, until then I can either make this thing here work or I can uh, just kind of bolt it onto the side and make it like a solid bar combination. So, but this, uh, this thing's worked out pretty good. The bar's tweaked a little bit, but just kind of unloosening things and straightening them back up should kind of bring everything back into focus. So I'd like to see if I can get it ready to go here for another rip. So that was pretty nice. I like that. 23 at 63 and we'll take a look at the data logs all right so we were able to repair the car we are shockless and we are now on a fixed wheelie bar mount so we're going to leave the exact same settings in there and we hit a 23 at 63 so we're going to see if we can duplicate that and then if we can then we will start changing gears <laughs> Son of a bitch, it just, yeah, it just went right that way. Right, two, three, four at 63. That is close enough, that was a good hit. So as you can see, it spun again, just, it just darted left and again in there. So the car seems to be okay. Just gonna do a nice slow run down the road, make sure it's all good. And um, yeah, that's where we're at. So those were the last hits of Saturday. Of course, I needed to actually do more repair to the car. Not sure what is going on down there at the end of that road, but we will be sweeping that stuff for sure today. Uh, some other people were just kind of doing that as well, where it was just darting immediately. I hand off the trigger, hand off the wheel and it just did at that time for sure. So that one was not on me. The first one I'll take credit for. Anyway, they were both decent runs. And if we take a little look at the logs here, um, we're still getting a little bit of slippage that was going on. And it looks like uh, our battery voltage, you know, the new battery is paying off. Um, only hitting a six volt, you know, which I know a lot of people are still going to say that's pretty low. I would agree, but I need to work on gearing and stuff a little bit more with this. Uh, way less timing is in this thing than it needed to be. And we're still running those actual times and speeds. So that's very, very impressive. This uh, run had a max uh, RPM of 42,000. So I think we can uh, get some more RPM out of this thing with either a better ramp or an actual um, the gearing I have went inside here. We'll take a look real quick and have made a couple changes for today. Uh, one thing, so one thing I did do was I did lower my drag rake. It was, I had it at 20. I think I raised it from like 10 to 20 for where we were actually running at the other week. So I just lowered it to 15. I can't really remember a hundred percent. Um, the other thing that we're doing is I was running four degrees of timing. So I actually, uh, 
put that to six just to add a couple more. I don't want to go too far off of what was going on, but I also want to see how capable this battery is. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was my chi range was a little bit higher. It was coming in like around 10 to 11,000. I know I said that I had it coming in at the end of the video, uh, at the end of the run earlier in the video, and I actually did a rip like that and it hit 68 miles per hour. So I think that is definitely going to be key and that holds true, but I need to find my gearing. So right now it seems I'm making about 42, 43,000 max RPM. So I'm going to try to stick in six degrees of timing in between 6,200 and 36,000 RPMs. And that is basically my plan for the entire day today. I don't know if I'm going to do a gear change or not. We're going to do some outlaw and some bracket racing. So we will see what happens. Maybe I will at least maybe go up like two tooth uh, on the pinion, two teeth. I'm already down to 27. I don't really know if I need to go any lower at all. I'd rather see if I gain RPM by going up. So this is pretty much what I'm going to run today unless something catastrophically goes bad, um, like two wrecks. Uh, thank goodness I was able to repair the wheelie bar, but I do have the single bar coming and stuff, part of the weight reduction program. Hey, see who turn around back there? Say hi, lucky girl. Say hi. Sunday has done and gone, and nothing really went that well Sunday either. I cannot get back-to-back -back consistent hits going on with this car. The roads just won't take any power, or the fact of the matter is, I think the Castle Motor just requires a, for me, a lot of, uh, self-made tuning like a p tuning curve in the actual sanwa if you look at all of my logs out of the 25 30 hits i've made over the past couple weeks i've only made like really four or five clean hits i get great power maybe to like half third three quarters of track and then i will get a lot of spin and no matter what i try to do as far as like ramping or whatever you know the car will launch like a beast it will just basically just start breaking loose and the only way to do that to fix that in my opinion for me is to go ahead and make an actual p curve which is basically the nine point expo curve inside here. Now you can do it in the ESC, but it's a lot easier just to do it in the sand wall because you can kind of click up and down. The problem with that is it takes a lot of time and you really need to do it based on the track that you are actually at. So that way you know where at in your P curve, like say P point number five is like half track. P point number seven would be like three quarters track. So that way you kind of could drop those or raise those as you can see that you are making a nice clean RPM run. So we're racing on different surfaces now. I don't have the time. So unfortunately I pulled the, the castle out and I put the Trinity uh, two and a half turn back in there. And I went out the other day, kind of snuck out and made just like three or four back to back awesome hits. I think my lowest was like a 2.31 or something like that. More mile per hour something i'm definitely more familiar with and it's something i need to do just for the, a couple weeks here because we got a race coming up next weekend so i can't really mess around with the castle stuff anymore so we did learn i think a lot as far as how that goes also learned just like the body itself the the chassis like i was expecting the chassis to be a lot more unpredictable when shaving that much weight off of there even though it's still like around a 2600 gram chassis and it should be later when we and it should be lighter when we replace that wheelie bar just as stable and just as great as ever so big thumbs up to the five star gang and that chassis just loving it still i am super happy with the way that that performed and after making a couple initial test hits with the trinity i see that it's right back where it was and it's just going to take a little bit more time so hopefully we are definitely going to be going faster now if not i'll probably cry and maybe i'll cry on camera for you guys so that's going to do it for this video didn't end how I thought the weekend was going to. It really was not a good weekend, just the, between the weather and clouds and changing conditions. Haven't had a good opportunity to get lots and lots of good solid testing time going from place to place. But I think uh, some of that stuff is settling down for us now. So stop back again for the next video, guys. There's going to be a lot more exciting stuff coming. Peace.